The toxic relationship of a young couple in love led to tragedy. An investigation revealed that things were not as simple as they seemed. Nerga Larsa, who was born on September 11, 1998 in Gualeguaychú, Argentina, a city of about 100,000 people, which borders with Uruguay and is famous for its carnivals. Nair was a very sociable, fun-loving girl from childhood. She had a brother, Aaron, who was three years younger than her. His brother was developmentally delayed and had difficulty learning. Unlike his sister, he was later given a disability. Nair did well in school, and learning languages was easy. Their family was exemplary, strong and happy. There was always perfect order at home. From childhood their mother had taught the children to be clean. Nair was obsessed with cleaning, order, washing her hands. Her father was a police officer. Her parents were not strict, on the contrary, they pampered their children very much. Nair dreamed of becoming a lawyer, and after graduation from school she went to university to study law. The girl loved sports and went every day to training and massage to maintain an ideal figure. They had many girlfriends with whom they went to parties. In 2012, at the age of 14, she met 15-year-old Fernando Posteriso at a bowling alley. Fernando was born on January 3, 1997 in the same city, Gualeguaychú, Argentina. He was a good, cheerful, active boy from a decent family, liked animals and liked Nair. The teenagers began dating and their relationship was complicated. They often fought and broke up, but after a few days they were together again. They were both jealous and didn't trust each other, which was the reason for their conflicts. In 2016, they went on a trip to Brazil with the Nair family, which went great, they hardly ever fought and enjoyed their vacation. Things seemed to be getting better, but the problems only escalated. They kept fighting and breaking up and then making up. On Christmas Eve 2017, the couple went to a party at the very same bowling alley. Fernando, 20, and Nair, 19, were vacationing there separately with their friends. As it turned out, they had a fight before the party, so they weren't there together. There was a fight between Fernando and another guy, Rafael, at the bowling alley. What the fight was about is not entirely clear, because the versions of Nair, Fernando, and their friends are different. Fernando wrote to his friends that he was severely beaten, she said that Fernando was just jealous of the other guy and jumped on him. On December 28, 2017, Nair went for a massage and after the massage found her phone was dead. She remembered that she had left the charger at Fernando's. The girl went to his house and stayed the night. Fernando drove her home on his motorcycle. At dawn, Fernando was found bleeding by a cab driver who was driving by. The cab driver called the police and an ambulance. By the time the ambulance arrived, it was too late. He was dead. The police who arrived on the scene found that Fernando had been shot twice near his motorcycle and that two helmets were lying next to him. The news quickly went viral, and at 7 a.m. Nair, who was awake, found out about it and posted a picture of him and him together on her social media page and captioned it. Five years together, fights and breakups, reconciliations, but always with love. I love you forever, my angel. Fernando's mother called her and asked what had happened, but Nair didn't know what had happened. Police officers began collecting evidence at the scene and investigating the murder. The initial version of a robbery was rejected because the money Fernando had was not stolen. It was a quiet, safe neighborhood with a low crime rate. But then who could have killed the guy? Who could have had a motive? It turns out that Fernando was shot with a 9mm pistol. This weapon is usually only used by police officers. Could it be that some police officer was able to kill him? It was also determined that the guy was first shot from behind at close range. Probably someone who was driving him from behind had shot him. Then the perpetrator walked up to him and shot him in the heart from the front. Could it have been someone he knew? This theory is confirmed by the presence of a second helmet. The cops began reviewing the security footage from all the surveillance cameras around the area and found the 522 bus leaving from where the murder took place. The girl, whose face could not be seen, came under suspicion. Nair was invited to the police for questioning. She confidently stated that Fernando had taken her home that night. She took a shower and went to bed, and woke up in the morning to find out about the tragedy. Then she spouted stories about how sorry she was for Fernando. Nair looked very upset and cried. The investigators had no further questions for her. The police decided to question her father, a policeman, their colleague. And he told them that he didn't know any Fernando at all, but that turned out not to be true. Later, photos were found from a trip they had taken together to Brazil, where they were all in the same picture. Father Nair knew Fernando very well, and it is not clear why he lied. The police suggested that the father might have been involved in the crime, so he lied that he didn't know the boy. They were just working out the version that the policeman was involved. Because of the gun that was taken for examination, 
it turned out that it was the gun that had been used to shoot Fernando. Nair's father became the prime suspect. Investigators speculated what his motive might have been. The father probably didn't like his daughter Nair's relationship with Fernando, and he might have gotten angry and shot the boy because of it. And then there was an unexpected twist in the case. Nair confessed to Fernando's murder herself to protect her father, who was about to be arrested. She claimed to have been physically abused by the boyfriend. That night he grabbed her by the hair and took her home. So she shot him. But how could she even have a gun? It was clearly a planned crime since she brought a gun with her. As it turned out, Nair had stolen her father's service pistol from the refrigerator and put it back after the murder. Her parents did not suspect her of anything. She was the one who was captured on the surveillance tape. The police asked her why she then ran away and tried to cover her tracks. She didn't call the police or an ambulance. If it wasn't her fault, then why was she hiding? Nair replied that she was confused. At that moment she did not think Fernando would die and did not realize the seriousness of the situation. When she found out that she had killed him, she was very upset. Her friends and his friends gave conflicting testimony. Her friends blamed Fernando for everything, because Nair constantly complained about him, and his friends blamed Nair for everything. Some even claimed it was hard to even call them a couple, because they spent a lot more time separately than together. Nair had five other guys that she dated and Fernando may have had other girlfriends too. Fernando and Nair's correspondence was analyzed, and judging from their messages, it seemed more like Fernando was the victim in this relationship. Nair was very aggressive, threatening him, and soft, kind Fernando complained to his friends about getting beaten up when he wanted to break up with Nair. He was tired of the relationship and just wanted a quiet life without her. Perhaps because of this, Nair decided to kill him because she wanted revenge for Fernando wanting to break up with her. Nair later claimed that she accidentally shot the guy while holding the gun. Allegedly they both fell off the motorcycle onto the ground, and that's when the gun went off the first time. Then she picked up the gun, and she accidentally shot him again. It didn't sound plausible at all. The ballistics expert denied any possibility of two accidental shots. Even if the first shot was accidental, the second shot was definitely intentional. Also, the security cameras showed that she was walking home at a normal pace. She had walked more than 20 blocks to her home. She was not in the state of shock and confusion that she claimed she was in after the accidental shots. A graphological examination was conducted. The expert determined that Nair had significant emotional imbalance with self-centered manipulative traits. Her handwriting reflects self-centeredness, a desire for attention, a tendency for severe mood swings and behavior, impulsiveness, aggressiveness, a tendency to lie, dominance and manipulativeness. The signature shows that there is an important emotional imbalance, which she tried to hold, and it failed. Judging by the handwriting, Nair is not as simple as she seemed at first glance. The girl has a very contradictory, complex, overbearing, aggressive personality. As it turned out, at the age of 16, she decided to play a joke on her parents and staged her kidnapping. The frightened parents were shocked when they found out it was a prank. Before the trial, the girl was sent for a psychiatric evaluation. The psychiatrist concluded that she was sane, she was an absolute narcissist, irascible, aggressive, and unrepentant and regretful of anything she had done. She was diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder due to a frequency obsession. At the trial, Nair behaved very defiantly. She came in shorts, looked at everyone with arrogance and dislike, constantly fixing her hair and flirting with everyone. At the same time she kept insisting that it was self-defense, but no one believed it. The girl's mother defended her. The father, later disowned his daughter. There was no evidence that Nair had been physically abused by Fernando. The prosecution has voiced its version of what happened. Fernando took the girl home around 2 a.m. when they arrived, they went into Cairo's house and argued there for about two hours. Fernando wanted to break up with her, but she was against it. The girl discreetly took her father's guns and they drove off somewhere. As they drove down an empty, dark street, Nair asked him to stop. She got off the motorcycle and shot him in the back. Fernando fell and she shot him again and then went home. At home, she took a shower, washed off the blood splatter and gunpowder residue on her hands, put her father's gun back on the refrigerator, changed her clothes, and went to bed. Nair was found guilty of murder and sentenced to life in prison, with parole. After 35 years, she could walk free, at the age of 54. Nair became the youngest prisoner in Argentina to be sentenced to life imprisonment. The girl filed three appeals, but all of them were rejected, and the sentence was upheld. Now the 23-year-old girl claims that she is not guilty at all, and that the killer was her father, who fired his gun. But then how did the father not show up on the surveillance tapes at all? But they did show Nair, who was supposedly at home at the time. 
Then what was she doing there? Her mother divorced her father and claims to believe her daughter. Nair claims that she was afraid of her father and her uncle who raped her, so she took the blame. And her father was abusive and she now fears for her mother and brother. Against her uncle, she filed a lawsuit in court. The case received a wide public response. There were almost no indifferent people among the locals to the case. Some supported Nair so far and believed in her innocence, and some, on the contrary, believed that she had not only killed Fernando, but had destroyed her life, her future, and the future of her brother, who would have no one to take care of even after her parents died. Her parents hoped that Nair would help him because he is disabled and can't take care of himself, but unfortunately she let her family down as well. If you like the video, please support my channel by giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, there are a lot of interesting things ahead of you.